Hello, GHS members. We put this video together to uh, demonstrate uh, some uh, easy navigation through the uh, website of the Society, which you can access by uh, typing golfheritage.org into your browser. This is the visitor's homepage that I'm briefly scrolling through that you'll see um, when you arrive there. Uh, and I'll uh, get back to the various features available on that uh, visitor side, but uh, the dominant theme here is to uh, review the uh, member exclusive benefits uh, that you uh, can see uh, by logging into the system. If you've forgotten your password, you can certainly uh, click here and uh, request a new password. My computer has remembered uh, my um, login details uh, and that takes me to a, a welcome page uh, notifying of my um, up-to-date uh, status or need to renew. One of the new and very exciting features of the website is is that it contains an ever-growing archive of uh, what we term grand zooms of the society which uh, we uh, hold on a, a frequent basis, inviting experts, historians, writers, collectors uh, to share knowledge and uh, stories with our membership. Uh, you've probably seen invitations to join these Zooms, uh, but if you haven't had the opportunity, you can certainly come to the website and enjoy seeing those uh, at your leisure. And here's a random sampling of uh, some short segments from a couple of those on the list. And I think it's the one thing I would want to convey to the group here is par is such a modern concept. You know, nobody, the reason there was no concept of par is nobody played um, to put up a score. It didn't matter what number you got. It only mattered if it was a lower number than the person that you were playing against. You know, everything was a match. Stroke play was viewed as, um, you know, an unfortunate necessity on club medal days when everybody in the club was playing and you needed to have a result at the end of the day. Uh, but nobody played stroke play for fun in uh, golf in the, in the age of Tommy Morris and, and for some time after that as well. So that's why there was no concept of par. But when Tommy started putting up scores that people thought were crazy, uh, then people started to talk about, well, what, what did represent perfect golf? Uh, you know, 85s, the 693s, the M43s, those are the, all the deep face ones that uh, Greg Norman won with, Freddie Couples, you know, Davis Love the Third, Nicholas, uh, all the guys that were really great players, every one of them used these golf clubs. And very rarely did you see somebody using a power build or something like that compared to. Uh, so I, I started studying what the tour players were using. And I started studying past ways, uh, what they won with. And it made such a big difference to me because as I am going to share you with you, share with you tonight, what I like to collect, sometimes it's, uh, it's in relationship to what has won on the tour. Sometimes it has a relationship to what I used to play with in high school. You know, these are a lot of great reasons because if you look behind me and you see about 50 of those silver scout armor putters, the 38 52s and all they're made in the thirties and forties. Well, I putted with those in high school, and it was actually one of the collector. I'm not going to tell you about values of golf clubs. I'm not going to tell you what kind of clubs to collect. You got to make that up. You know, you got to make your mind up on that yourself. There are three disciplines that I see in being a better collector. One is specialize, specialization. And those are the areas where you don't have to spend a lot of money to put a nice collection together. And the outcome of being a specialist is that people will remember you. People will find stuff for you. And as you make friends within the society and within the collecting world, 
you help them with their specializations, they'll help you with your specializations. We need more. And uh, had my picture taken with him. I was thrilled. And, uh, you know, uh, the next day I went back to Ecker's drug and had it blown up and, and had it blown up into this picture. He signed it for me. And then he went off to play his last round at Piper Glen. And that's where this hat comes in, Burn. If you can see me wearing this hat, that was in the morning. Well, I was still wearing that hat the final day. And Arnie, uh, and Arnie was uh, playing the last day. He wasn't playing very well. It was about 90 degrees and I knew he wasn't playing that well, but who cares? I mean, it's Arnold Palmer. So um, he put it out on 18 at Piper Glen, if I'm not mistaken, for like an 82 or an 83, something like that. And the crowd just was going crazy clapping. I walked away and walked up the locker room on the steps to the locker room and just stood there. And I had this hat on and I looked at my watch and almost, almost 50 minutes later, he finished signing autographs and walked very wearily and tired toward the steps where I was standing at the top by myself. He walked up the steps, his, his visor was off, he was sunburned, he looked, took one look at me, and I got a little choked up, I stuck my hand out, he reached up on his collar and took his little umbrella pin off, put it in my hand, reached up on my head and kind of roughly, roughly took this hat off took his pen off and signed the bill of this cap. I didn't ask him to. That's just the kind of person he was. And put it back on my head. And I told him I loved him. He went inside. The clubhouse didn't speak. And I just went down the steps, went back to my car and started crying. Well, in my opinion, that's the kind of man he was. In my opinion, that's the kind of man he will always be. Um, I've got nothing but fond memories of, uh, of this man. So uh, I look forward to being at La Trobe again. It's been a long time. Look forward to being up there and seeing everyone. So this day there is a real tendency on the part of people to so idolize my grandfather that they make him almost like a, a statue a bronze statue on a marble pedestal and in fact he was a man and even though he accomplished many great things there were aspects of his character that were i mean he could be somewhat irascible he could be somewhat opinionated. Uh, he was certainly not a saint in any meaningful definition of the term, but what he was was a very real and genuine human being who wrestled with both the greater and the lesser angels of his nature. And, uh, and, and I think, to be honest, that's what I think contributes so much to his greatness, certainly in my eyes. Those Zooms are an awful lot of fun. So if you get a constant contact email with an invite to join one of those uh, live, please do so, as well as uh, the many regional and other topical Zooms to enjoy. Let me scroll down to one of the pride and joys of the society, and that's uh, certainly the golf, which in 2018 replaced the Bulletin as the long-standing quarterly magazine of the society. Clicking there takes you to the 14 most recent editions of the golf. If you're a digital only uh, member of the uh, society, this is, of course, where you come to um, 
view your edition. It's also very convenient for full members who indeed get a printed copy in the mail. Uh, but as I'll uh, mention shortly, there are a number of cases uh, where you have some advantages to also having a digital representation of the golf and, of course, of all the material in the archives of the 50 previous years of the bulletin. I'll open the most recent edition by hitting the click here to view a PDF version and uh, scroll down. It's very easy to see. My, my eye is catching uh, this uh, interesting uh, image of uh, ball retrievers. And here's uh, quite a unique article uh, about a member and a segment of his collection which features... Uh, um, these types of devices, which is awesome. Um, another article about um, Eben Byers, the 1906 um, U.S. amateur champ, and his uh, tragic death, having taken uh, medications um, that were radioactive uh, with um, unknown danger at the time. And also notice this button uh, called Extra Holes that allows you to access additional information that is provided from time to time that doesn't fit into the hard copy edition. And so you can come here to see that added material. Of course, a special benefit of the website is the ability to view the past 50 years of the Bulletin of the Society. Now I can search those uh, archives using a specific term or phrase or use a bulletin year or a bulletin month. And so when I'm doing research, I'm usually using a uh, content term. But one of the things I personally do is in those months between receiving the newest edition of the golf, I'll select a bulletin year. And here I'll randomly pick 1999, open that up, and select one of those bulletins and enjoy some of the past history of the society. And frequently I'll run into articles and tidbits uh, totally unexpectedly, which are uh, great fun and great information. One of my favorites was to go back to 1970, which was the first year of the society, in the first bulletin, which was in September of 1970. Now, what's fun to notice that in bulletin number one, the name of the society was the Golfiana Collectors Club. And that first bulletin was only two pages, one describing the um, a society and uh, putting forth some ideas for future bulletins and a request um, for information to be put into a directory. Now, when that second bulletin came out in December 1970, the organization's name was changed to the Golf Collector Society, and the bulletin was multiple pages. Now, when you explore the bulletin archives using a search term, whether it be for research or simply to put your or your friend's name and uh, see what uh, shows up, there are a few tricks that you need to know to make that experience enjoyable and efficient. As an example, I was recently uh, doing some research on the famous uh, Dunn family of uh, golfers, instructors, club makers, architects, and uh, went to the bulletin archives, typed in Dunn, and did the search. And you see that that gives a long list of bulletins and issues of the golf that include the word D-U-N-N. -N. Now I've opened up the most recent reference and as I'm scrolling through it I run into this awesome reference to the Dunn family and I see this family tree which shows that Thomas and Janet had two sons born in 1821 
These are the Dunn twins who played in the famous uh, uh, big money matches against old Tom Morris and Alan Robertson. And um, William had two sons, one of which was uh, Willie Dunn Jr., who um, was the winner of the unofficial 1894 U.S. Open, and his uh, brother Thomas. And Thomas had uh, two sons, John Duncan Dunn, which um, many of the many of you uh, club collectors will recognize as the person who patented the one-piece clubs, and his brother Seymour, a famous instructor, architect, author. And so I was overjoyed to run into this uh, article. Um, but it's not always this easy. What I did here was I opened up the very first reference to Dunn, and as I quickly scroll through it, it's not obvious uh, where the reference is. So you have to do a special search, and this comes in handy for searching any website. Uh, if you're using a Windows PC as I am here, you look at the lower left portion of the keyboard, and you'll see the buttons Control, and next to that, a button with a Windows icon. These aren't always in the exact same position, but it's usually pretty obvious. Now, if you want to find a word on a page, you press Control and F at the same time. And doing Control F brings up a box into which you can type a search term. And I'll go ahead and type in Done and press Enter. And as soon as I do, you will see this symbol, one of two, show up. And you will see highlighted in green the word done. And there's the reference to Willie Dunn, 1894, Open Champion. Now, there isn't a lot of information there. But I go back up to the top, up to the box, and press the down arrow. And that immediately takes the page to the second reference. And this reference in that same article is about Seymour Dunn in his book, Golf Fundamentals. And so there isn't a lot of information on the Dunn's here in this particular issue, but it immediately shows me where those references are. You can also do this on an Apple PC, uh, pressing Command F. And there are other ways um, some of which I'll show you, but using the Control F buttons is a very easy way uh, to do a search of any page. Now here's another. I've gone back to the original search, and I'll pick another bulletin. And up it pops, and I'll hit Control F, which will bring up the search box. Done is already in there, and it says there are three references to Done, and they all, all three are on this same paragraph. Which, which talks about One Piece Clubs and the patent, um, the invention of John D. Dunn, son of Tom, patented in 1894, says that his firm, the BGI Company, sold in the first year 2,000 One Piece Clubs. Here's another bulletin with a reference to Dunn. Um, it's a bulletin that includes a reprint of an article in Golf from 1901 that was written by J.D. Dunn for the purpose of helping people who want to assemble their own clubs. And he talks about persimmon being the best choice because it undoubtedly dries further than any wood. And more specifically, that soft persimmon dries further than hard persimmon as it has more resiliency kind of an early description of coefficient of restitution in modern clubs. He says, uh, bad players or beginners have no business to use persimmon because it's liable to break with ill treatment. Instead, they should use bent dogwood, which is practically indestructible. Now, I'm only going to show you one final example of a bulletin selected in the Dunn search to show you what I frequently do with information that I see as I review the site. This page comes up because there's a reference uh, to the Duns being involved with experimenting with the uh, gutta-percha ball, 
in around 1848. And I've decided that I really enjoy this article and I'd like to keep the information from my records. One of the ways is to save that precise image by going to my keyboard and locating the Windows button in the bottom left. And while holding that button, simultaneously press the print screen button, uh, which is located in the top right region. And when I do that in a couple of seconds, you'll see the screen dim right there as it captures that image. And it puts it in a file called Screenshots in the Pictures section. Just to show you, I'll go to my Files. Brings up Screenshots. And there it is. Close that out. It's also under my pictures. Hit down here. Screenshots is right there. And there it is again. Here I am back to the original article in the archives. And I have some other options on my PC. And that's to go up to the top right corner where there are the three dots, the more button. Click there and it brings a list of other things that I can do. You go down the page and you see that I can uh, print if I'd like to, uh, but I can also uh, share it by hitting copy link and sharing the entire PDF in an email. Of course, that's copyrighted material. You may have also noticed that on that list is find on page which is an alternative to pressing Control F. That brings up the search box. Done is left over from the earlier search. This next section is a brief rundown of using a smartphone uh, to access the website. In this instance, I've already logged in on my iPhone into the bulletin archives. And I'll uh, do a search again using the term done. And that brings me the long list that we saw before. And let me quickly jump to the uh, lower portion and select that from 2019. And up comes the edition of 36 pages, which is one of the ones we saw earlier. If you look at the bottom, you see the square with the up arrow. Selecting that gives you some options the first row of things that come up on my iPhone are the ability to share this in an email or a text message. One of the most useful things to do, just as we saw on a PC, is to find a word on a page. So when you select that, a text box comes up. And again, I'll type in done. And that'll highlight every instance of where the word done shows up. I go over to the arrows, to just to the right of the search box, and as I click on those, it advances me through those pages. And again, we see um, the article I referred to earlier. Now, I happen to be interested in this family tree, so I'll take a snapshot of it, a screen save, and I've got options. Save it as a photo or save it to files. Or delete it and I'm going to save it as a photo and there it is in my photos to enjoy later very briefly the process isn't much different on an Android device typically instead of the uh, box with an up arrow as on an iPhone on an Android device you go up to the top right of the screen and you see the three vertical dots. You select that, and it brings you to some options, which includes Find in Page, where you can type in your search term. OK, I'm back to my PC where I'm still logged in. I'd like to move on to another awesome feature of the website, 
the member directory. And I can search the directory in a number of ways, by first name, by last name, by state, if you want to see who might live nearby you, by region, just type in the region number in the search box. The last choice is by collection code or interests. This section becomes increasingly important as the society um, is in the process of creating specific pathways for members with similar interests to interact with each other. And while my personal interests are broad, my primary interest is in medals and trophies. Let me demonstrate by selecting the abbreviation for medals, which is MD, and it pops a list of all of the members that include medals in their interests. For privacy, I've blurred out uh, the information. I'm scrolling down to my own name, click on the search button, which takes me to a page that shows my name and what region I'm from, my phone number, my email, shows my collecting interests are general as well as medals and trophies. It's a very cool and efficient way for members to interact. Another option is to visit the GHS gear store where you can purchase hats and other apparel bearing the GHS logo. When you click on the link, you'll often uh, be made aware of a sale that's in progress. So I'd recommend you uh, check and see if there's a sale going on. And here's one uh, during Valentine's uh, week that had a 40% off. So I'm going to click on this box that says click here to activate coupon. I've come to the store uh, to get another GHS uh, hat, but I do notice this jacket over here on the right side looks kind of cool. And I know I'm gonna get 40% off, so I'm gonna think about that. But I came to buy a hat, and this I like this particular style. And I've decided I want something in red. I already have a blue and a black hat. In the box for the red hat, I've inputted the number one. The site also shows uh, details of the products, so you know what you're getting. But I'm going to add that to my shopping cart. And my shopping cart shows that I've Got on the hat. We got a hat on the list. Got twelve bucks off. Do notice there's a shipping charge, and that's on the whole order. I think I want to go back and take a look at that jacket. So I'm going to continue shopping. And there is the jacket. It looks kind of cool. Click there, and there it is in red and black. I got to decide on a size. I need to type the number one for one of those into the appropriate color and size. So I'm going to scroll down, check out the uh, recommendations for sizing. I'll go back up, put one in that box, and click Add to Shopping Cart. Uh, the cart shows uh, both items the uh, red and black jacket and the red hat. I saved 62 bucks. My shipping and handling is still $7.95. So I'm good with that. I'm going to go ahead and uh, proceed to checkout. I already have an account, so I'm going to sign in. It's easy to create a new account, but I'm going to sign in, fill in my details, there's my order summary. It includes shipping and state sales tax. Often there isn't any shipping. All I have to do is confirm my order. In a few days, I'll have my matching red hat and jacket with a GHS logo. We'd also like to point out that there is a, a section that allows and welcomes member comments. Fill in your name, email, your phone number if you care to, and a message. And submit that message to us and we'll get back to you. We also provide the address and phone number if you'd like to contact us that way and let us know your thoughts. 
I'll wrap up the members only page with these four items. On top is information about the possibility of visiting some private museums with the proper contacts. Clicking on the upper link gives you a list of the number of those museums and the contact information. The second link lists a number of golf historians and leaders of golfing societies with contact information. You can view the bylaws and the constitution of the society. And there's access to the minutes of the nearly monthly meetings of the board of directors. And finally, there are a number of tools and documents that members and regional directors can use to promote the society. That certainly was an, an extensive review of the member side of the website but I'd like to take a few more minutes and review the visitor side, which still has plenty of information for uh, members, and also uh, hopefully serves uh, as uh, interesting content to encourage visitors to join our fine society. As you know, we access the society uh, webpage uh, by uh, using the domain name golfheritage.org. This is the home page, and of course, at the top of the menu is the login for members, which we've already reviewed. Uh, as I scroll down, there's a welcome to the GHS, explaining to visitors uh, a lot about what the society is about and some of the benefits. There's a section on news alerts, um, um, much of this for members, notifying them of podcasts and uh, upcoming events and the dates and subjects of upcoming Grand Zooms. Then there's also the uh, section um, on classics from the archives, which give uh, visitors an idea of the types of things they'll find uh, when they um, actually join the society and receive uh, uh, the golf. Uh, then there's the news and features uh, section, um, which is uh, continuously updated and stored in archives uh, that includes uh, uh, items that are uh, currently in the news and um, uh, short articles on uh, uh, many uh, subjects of interest historically and about collecting and ongoings of the society. Uh, sometimes uh, these are articles from uh, outside news agencies, uh, but uh, many of them are written by our own uh, members. And so we welcome uh, any of you to submit something you'd like to share that's uh, uh, timely and relevant to what's in the news that week or that month uh, about a subject uh, dear to you. Notice that the archive includes 24 pages of these, so there's uh, over 120 of these articles uh, in the archive. And any of these, including all other content on the visitor side, uh, can also be uh, searched. In fact, I was doing a recent search uh, that related to a print that was for sale in a recent golf auction of the Blackheath golfer, and I wanted to uh, remind myself of uh, some of the information on uh, uh, identifying one of the very rare original prints. So let me recreate the search that I did at that time. I typed in Blackheath and hit Enter. And that took me to a uh, list of uh, multiple references on the visitor side to Blackheath. And here's the one that I was looking for. It gives the history of the painting and of the print and dimensions and other characteristics regarding the very rare original print, which goes for 20 grand, versus the $100 later printings. Another recent search 
was about the great Patty Berg, which brings up a number of choices, but in particular this article written by Jim Davis, really extensive and well done. I'm back to the home page, and you'll notice this list. On a PC, it's on the right-hand column, while on mobile devices, it's at the bottom of each page. It includes a link to an article about golf collecting in general, and then under that it has uh, several links to some very specific uh, collecting categories. Now we've pulled this uh, from the menu and put it uh, in its own section on uh, each page uh, so that it be more obvious to visitors and members. Expanding the list is an ongoing process and if any of you'd like to share your expertise and write a, a short uh, introduction to your uh, favorite area of collecting, uh, please let us know and we'll be happy to uh, help you with that. As one example, I'll select the category of balls and there are actually uh, two sections to it. An initial uh, excellent demonstration of options and some references to collecting balls. And also uh, within that a separate link that focuses on uh, surface pattern of balls. And so hopefully we'll get visitors who uh, come and see these things. Uh, give them something to get excited about. Another fun feature and visual feature is the collectible curio. You can click on the photo and see that particular item and its uh, description and story. Or you can go uh, just below to the archive I'll select one from the uh, second page, and that refers to the Golf Queen brand of perfume, powders, and soaps uh, from 1903 as advertising items related to golf, which took advantage of the cachet associated with the relatively new sport of golf and its perceived connection with elegance and high society. This final section of the video explores some of the uh, menu items along the top of the page. Next to the Home button is the About Us tab, which gives visitors a nice history of the society and our mission and objectives, lists the board of directors, and also some of the awards that can be earned by uh, members of the society. The Events tab uh, lists uh, upcoming uh, uh, items such as uh, notice of the uh, National Hickory Championship uh, at Foxburg. Uh, another big event would be the uh, Latrobe Heritage and Hickory Classic. Gives you a chance to play the uh, Latrobe Country Club, Arnie's Home. It's a fantastic place. For 175 bucks, a GHS member gets to play the course, um, get a cart, food, prizes. I mean, an incredible day, um, and all uh, available because you're a GHS member. The menu tab for collecting uh, lists the um, links and articles we've already mentioned. And again, this is a growing part of our website with your help. Moving to the Resources tab, there's some awesome elements there, starting with helpful links. I'll scroll down to show you some of my favorites, uh, starting with art and books. This highlighted link on golf books will take you to a site uh, where they do uh, some book reviews. It's nice. If you want to purchase uh, books, you can uh, certainly do so from the classics of golf. Or you can uh, look into Peter Yagi's golf books. If you're interested in purchasing artwork from Linda Hartaw or Robert Fletcher, those links will take you to their websites. 
This link is very special because it uh, not only takes you to a list of uh, books that will help you with your collecting or historical interests, uh, but it also includes uh, a number of individual book reviews by our own editor, Jim Davis. And very thorough, very entertaining. Here's another. Just above that is a list of auctions. Here I've clicked on the golf auction. It takes me directly to their site, which at the moment their auction is in progress. Here's a list of golf societies. Under golf history, uh, one of my favorites is this one, Scottish Golf History. Clicking there takes me to their website where I see um, the oldest golf societies. I click there, it's one of my favorites. The earliest is Royal Burgess. Here's a nice article about that society from 1735. There's also a section on uh, golf history videos. First up is Keeper of the Green, it's a full hour. A movie about uh, old Tom Morris. Here's another video about Walter Hagen. Here's Walter taking a practice swing. Here's Walter swing. And off he goes. Here's a video recording of um, a talk which uh, Mike Herzen gave us. Uh, to at uh, one of our um, annual meetings about Aaron Hills in Wisconsin, site of the 2017 U.S. Open. It was a tearjerker. And here's a, a list of Hickory Golf Associations, uh, some museums. Uh, let me take you back to the uh, menu and still within the resources category. Note that here's where you find premium classifieds where a member can list a golf item with several pictures for a small fee and the general classifieds for free where members can post things for sale or wanted lists. There's also a mechanism to contact the society and as we began, there's the member login, the member options. So thank you for having joined us. I know this was uh, long and somewhat tedious, but hopefully informative and still enjoyable.